So we're gonna do a little uh, coaching session for about an hour with uh, one of the homies. And then we'll do some Mythic Plus. Default, what's up? Bosley Zach, what's up, dude? Um, pull up some logs here. It's me, one of the homies. Uh, let's jump into one of our uh, Discord channels in the in the Discord channel. And I'll drag you up to a private channel. Can you hear me? Oh, you can't talk? That's gonna be a little... Oh, you're suppressed. Hold on a second. Uh, hold on a sec. Let's try going down here. How about now? Yo, there you are. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think it's because of permission issue. Okay, cool. How's your day, man? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Do you need some time? Do you need like a couple minutes? You're good. My fingers are freezing. No worries, dude. Um, okay. So besides what we kind of spoke about, um, hold on, let me just turn this on here. Um, there you go. That's good. Okay. So besides what we talked about, like, uh, in the, in DMS and stuff, um, what I norm, I'll just tell you what I normally do for, for coaching. And then you can kind of, um, say yes or no, if that works for you. So what I normally do, um, is I kind of ask you a couple of questions in regards to like what you're struggling with. So I know we spoke about like, you know, it's more of a theoretical thing. So like the mindset, um, so as a broad overview, like what you're struggling with and what you feel is like your weakest link, I guess. Um, and then I normally try to like see what you've understood so far as to how fire mage plays out in terms of rotation and stuff. Cause I'm sure, you know, rotation is really, really important. Um, and it's one of like the core aspects of doing good damage. And then you combine that with, you know, just knowing raid mechanics and stuff. Um, that's kind of where it all kind of just comes together and you put your rotation into action and you just um, pay more attention to mechanics than you pay attention to your rotation. So if, if that works for you, we can kind of just talk about what you think you're struggling with. Okay, cool. So why don't you give me a little bit of an overview on what do you think that you're struggling with specifically? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Yeah. You're talking about like between two combustions, right? You're talking about like what you do outside of cooldowns. Okay. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. There you go. Yeah. And and arcane power rotations. 
and I don't, I guess I don't really understand what I'm supposed to do in downtime and how to maintain DPS, how to still be useful okay. and not just be running around like an idiot. Gotcha. So I'm going to put your mind at ease a little bit. It's a very common um, concern of people that are, you know, maybe picking up fire for the first time or they're just kind of getting back into the swing of things. It's a very common concern that people are saying my DPS sucks outside of cooldowns. Everyone says it. I say it all the time. And it, it's kind of just the nature of the spec. You're not supposed to do tons of damage outside of your combustion window. There are things you can do to optimize your damage outside of combustion. But generally speaking, you're literally just hitting fireball. You're just spamming fireballs and converting, heating up into hot streaks. There's not much you can do outside of combustion to do a lot of damage. The most important thing you have to remember for that down phase is to not waste all of your instant casts like fire blasts and phoenix flames when you're starting to ramp back into your combustion and it's not really even a ramp it's just if you look at it like on a graph it's you spike and then you you drop down instantly well you're, maybe your ignite kind of trickles down but it, you're you're literally spiking up and down every time combustion's up so there's no ramp i know a lot of other maybe other classes have a ramp phase where they start ramping up to their cooldowns and then they pop everything there's no ramp for us it's combustion all of your damage and then combustion do is done all of your damage is gone so that kind of that kind of concern is very normal, and I think a lot of people um, feel the same way, and that's just how it plays out. So there's a, there's not much you can do, and that is something you just kind of have to either accept or maybe don't, you don't have to accept it. You can play an acro if you want, but that's just kind of how it is. Yeah, that's I understand that bit, which is why I was so I guess surprised when I parsed solo because mm. I felt like. I felt that I was doing the spiking thing, but I guess mm -hmm. I, my my unspikes were a little bit too low. Gotcha. Um, okay. So that's kind of why I asked for this. Like, obviously, uh, like you recommended, I can go to Alter Time, I can go to your guides, I can do all of that stuff and figure out what people do between. Right. But my issue, and I guess something that led me to coaching is obviously i i'm not getting something um that's outside of just what can be written in a guide or maybe i'm just misunderstanding something that can be written in a guide right so that's kind of why i'm here is i want to figure out what i'm missing gotcha. and what's making me because it's not like i'm parsing 80 or something where i'm like oh, i just have to optimize a little bit more i yeah. literally averaged 19 which is just like despicable <laughs> yeah uh, okay. i played sub rogue for most of bfa um, and or I played Outlaw for most of BFA actually, and then I played sub a little bit, and my parses got up to like 92s, um, and I like that. I felt good about that. I knew I could optimize a little bit more, but I did the same thing that I did when I was learning fire. I just spent hours on end at a training dummy, and asking people that I knew for help uh, and things like that. So I just don't know what I don't know, which is kind of why I'm here. Okay, cool. So. I understand the broad overview of what you're struggling with. Um, so why don't you go at first, because there's a lot of factors that go into all that shit. So let's break it down really quick. You're obviously the, the number one rule. You're not going to do damage if you don't have gear, right? That's just a, a, a given, right? Yep. Um, so I don't know what your gear looks like. If you don't mind link, just linking me your uh, your armory so I can take a look. I can just share screens if that's easier. Um, armory might be easier though as well. Yeah, armory is a little easier. I can just pull it up. Wow, armory. Moment. Take your time. So yeah, just while you get that pulled up. So obviously gear is an important thing, right? Um, there are other external factors that play into you doing damage. Um, and like I was saying before, boss mechanics, being comfortable with boss mechanics is another big, big, big thing that comes into doing damage. If you're constantly having to cancel casts and move out of things that you're not prepared for, or you're just completely, you know, assigned to something that just ruins your damage windows. Um, that's all. Those are all things that are going to go into affecting um, how much DPS you do, which is something that sometimes you can control and sometimes you can't. As far as mechanics go, you, it's a thousand percent controllable on the rare chance that it isn't. That's just something you have to, you know, take. But generally speaking, um, mechanics are going to be probably, if I had to guess, they'd be the second biggest thing is what is to what's going to affect your DPS the most. Um, so like literally just by looking at your armor, your gear is totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. There's like nothing. You're not wearing greens and blues, so your your character is more than capable of doing damage. Right. Um, so let me pull up. 
Um, the only thing is I have a lot of crit because I played an acro and right. an acro liked crit. So yeah. I've been trying to transition that out. I only swapped to fire in the last like week before raid. Okay. Because uh, I was cautioned against playing another spec. Right. Um, Whoever told you that's wrong. But... Well. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Catalan. Okay. So I pulled up some of, like I pulled up a good example of a, of a relatively heavy movement fight for, of mine. I just want to go through and see um, one of your logs. So if you had to take a guess out of your 15 percentile ones, which one would be the most, I guess, the best one? What did you feel the, the best on out of the fights you did so far? Um, I didn't feel super good on any of them. I'll send you my, I'll send you my logs. Uh, I, I have them in front of me. That's why I'm asking. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, I think Huntsman, Huntsman I did the best on. Okay. I got like I'm not asking in terms of damage, by the way. I'm, I'm saying, oh, what did you um, feel the best on? In terms of how comfortable you were, you were with the fight. Oh, God. Uh, probably Artificer. Okay. I'm surprised that's, term, a, like, that's a big movement. But I really know. like Artificer. It was one yeah. of my favorite boss fights that I like learned about going in. Um, when I was, fight. yeah, I, I think it's super cool. I appreciate, um, I appreciate the ability to do a couple mechanics and make them really challenging. I don't yeah, think yeah, I did yeah. well on it in terms of DPS, but I was the most comfortable with the mechanics of that fight going in. Okay. So I'm going to send you what I'm looking at as well, just so that, um, you can see what I'm seeing. Unless you're watching the stream, then it's, it's going to be a little bit delayed, but it shouldn't be. I can do, I'll, oh, I'll you have it pulled up. Just yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have both. Cool. So the reason I like using WoW Analyzer is because it's, it very obviously puts things in front of your face, like your cooldown usage and what the timeline looks like from start to finish. Yeah. Um, and I'm surprised you pick Artificer because this is one of the fights that if you get, you know, assigned to seeds or something, you're going to be moving around a fuck ton. Um, I was. You were? A okay. Bit, but... okay, cool. Um, so normally what I do is obviously check your, your, your rotation here. And from what I'm seeing, it, it looks fine. You might've had a couple of munched casts, but you're, you opened with, you know, double fire blast, whatever. Um, and I'm assuming you have the, the rotation down properly. Cause you've told me you've practiced it a lot. Right. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit nitpicky here. I don't want you to, to, you know, get upset. If I nitpick, I do the same thing to myself. Please. I look through my timeline I and I zero okay. ego. So please just tear okay. into me. Okay, cool. So, um, I am noticing after your combustion, I guess this is partially maybe due to movement or something, but you waited a, a really long time to use your shifting power. So it sat off of cooldown for 30 seconds. Um, so right after you finish combustion, generally speaking, you'll have no fire blasts, no Phoenix flames. You want to be using your second rune with your shifting power. If you can, if there's no mechanics, you need to move from whatever, obviously something's happening, you gotta get the fuck out. But generally speaking, you wanna try and put shifting power on cooldowns as, as fast as possible. That way that when you use it again, it's gonna be back off cooldown right after your next combustion. There are circumstances where it doesn't make sense to do that, but as a broad general rule of thumb, try to use shifting power inside of a rune of power um, after your combustion. Because here you gave, no, go ahead, sorry. Is there a reason for that? Because like, I wasn't, in a position and i guess we can look at this if we watch the actual video but i mm -hmm. wasn't in a position where i was going to do damage with shifting power so right. does it matter if i use it inside of rune of power afterwards or like regardless of whether i'm going to do damage so of course use like doing damage with your shifting power is obviously beneficial as a dps game um but the reason shifting power is so strong is because it refunds all of your it just gives you cdr it refunds your phoenix flames your fire blasts your combustion it just starts right. you know removing cooldown off of all of the abilities you just used so you want to use that when all of your abilities are on cooldown. Because if you wait, let's say 30 seconds, like what's happened here, is maybe you had maybe one uh, fire blast charge or two fire blast charges, and you might have munched procs. It just leaves a lot of opportunity for things to to get overcapped. And if you're capped on charges of anything, it's it's a DPS loss. Okay. So I was curious because I used rune of power right after my shifting power. I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I understand I should have used it at, like, that 15-second mark once my combustion was over just to get everything going again. Um, but I was... It was more of a question of, like, why do we use shifting power inside of rune if not for the increased damage? Like, I wasn't in a position to do damage okay. with it, so it doesn't yes. matter whether I use it inside of rune. No. That does, in, that, in that case, it does okay. not matter. That's totally fine. So, so and if like, we take I'll... out that 15-second chunk, yep. am I... Is that fine? Like, if we just go straight to 31 seconds, I use shifting power... 
Yep. Um, I think that Phoenix Flames is really bad because I definitely wasn't capped on charges and there's no reason for me to use it. Okay. Um, but after that, that, I did get a hit. Yeah, I did get a heating up proc out of it, so maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe calculated. But then I used Rune and then I went into. A little bit of a burst um, there. All right. Yeah. So, so I mean, in that, that case, in that case, like if you were to, like you said, completely remove that 15 second window and just use shifting power and then go into a rune like that, that's totally fine. Okay. And like I was going to say, the, the reason that shifting power is so strong is because of the CDR. If you can do damage with it on single target, that's great. But shifting power is the reason it is of good ability for fire mages is because it gives you that CDR. So giving you that CDR earlier in your combustion lets you use fire blasts. You know, in this 15 second window, if there was, you know, shifting power here, you might have been able to chain this faster over here, let's say. Let's say we just replace all this. We just cut this out. And you'll be able to chain inside this rune a little bit longer, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And then, um, I don't know if you're using double... You have a trinket here somewhere, randomly, just like outside of your rune. Try to use yeah. always your, your, your on-use trinket with your combustion. That's huge. Yeah, I tried to. I've been struggling. With... I asked a question about that, actually, in, in your Discord. I have hmm. the macro set up, but... I think my timing is just off for like when I cast it or when I double click it. Okay. Um, I also have double on use trinkets, which feels really awkward. Yeah, that does feel awkward. I I'm working on it, don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I use combustion and then double fire blast and whatever, and then do I cast my, or do I do the macro again, or do I ignore the two fire blasts until I have my intellect buff up from Trinket? Yeah, so well, I think a lot of people are having trouble with this. I, f I feel like people are asking this question a lot more than I've ever seen before. Generally, um, your combustion's off the cooldown, but your, your Trinket isn't off GCD. So what's going to happen is you're going to press combustion, and you won't use your Trinket at the same time if you're casting. So let's say you happen to be casting a Fireball or a Pyroblast, and you press combustion to get the crit off of in that cast. Yeah. Your Trinket's never going to go off because it's on right. the GCD. So you're going to have to right. mash your macro in order for it to come off as soon as that cast is, fi is finished casting. That's what you generally want to do. So I, I'm a, I'm a Spurg. I mash my combustion macro like 17 times while I'm in combustion just to make sure that Berserking, my Trinket, everything else comes off as soon as you you finish that cast. Okay, that makes sense. Because that's actually what happened there is like I, I thought it had been used mm -hmm. and then I looked and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, like, you're I like, fuck, where'd it go? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. So it then happens. I was like, oh, well, I'll just use it inside of my rune. But then obviously I don't have it up for my next combustion window, which worked out okay because I had my second on use trinket, the right. Imperial Ordinance up. Yep. And that like kind of made up for a couple of, da or a little bit of damage. But mm -hmm. yeah, with, yeah with so the... I tried to use it like 12 seconds before combustion came up and then I get the intellect buff for it. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I kind of just fucked it up. So I was like, oh shit. Well. Yeah. So as long as you know that, you know, you have to mash your macro, that should help procking your trinket. Cause like I, I run into the same issue sometimes. Like I'm running two on use trinkets now too. And I, I forget sometimes to mash my macro and then we'll go off. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. And the setup yep. you're running now, the ordinance and the badge, I know there was some talk about delaying um your cooldowns so that your because your ordinance what you can do is you can use it right and then it travels and then it comes back to you or something like that i've never used it yeah. but from what i've read um it's a really really slow travel speed so what you can actually do is use your ordinance so there's a 20 second delay between two unused trinkets so what you can do is use your ordinance to, like 20 seconds before you pop combustion and then when you pop combustion and use your int you'll get the benefit of both trinkets at, on, yeah. in the same burst right. window right so just, I didn't know if you knew that, but that's it's also something you can do as well. I did, but I didn't. I was not using my brain that's properly, fine. obviously. So um, yeah, I didn't know that. Though. So you're utilizing your your rune of power well, effectively. You you obviously knew that you know if you're not gonna hit anything with shifting power, just use it in ranged. Doesn't matter. You want the CDR from that. Um, and it doesn't tell me in the timeline. I can go look in the overview, but it doesn't tell me in the timeline if you munch, if you ever uh, end up running into the, the issue where like you'll overcap on fire blast charges in your shifting power. So that's going to be another thing you got to keep an eye on. I'm not sure if you're tracking your yeah, fire blast I, charges. If I hit, if I'm like two and a half, I try to just use one if I'm channeling shifting power. Mm. Like if I ever go above two charges, because um, Fire Blast cooldown is like eight seconds, and shifting power does four seconds per tick. So I yeah. just kind of try to, um, I try to keep it not at three. So I okay, usually cool. sit around two, and then in that in that couple seconds after shifting power, I'll get it back off cooldown. Okay, cool. So yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about while we're talking about your your, your combustion window here, 
Um, generally, right now, is because Ignite is worth nothing right now. Um, outside of combustion, you generally don't have a reason to ever use Phoenix Flames outside of the issue where you'll overcap on charges. And right. I know this is another question I get asked a lot. You, you don't want to use Phoenix Flames like you used to. I don't know if you played Fire Mage back when it, it was a guaranteed crit. But right now, right. it'll end up doing more harm than good because it'll, if you instinctively use it with a heating up proc, it'll just munch your proc if it doesn't crit, and then you're just wasting DPS. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I started playing Mage for this expansion. So it, gotcha. Like after so don't have, yeah. the expansion came out. So I have no muscle memory whatsoever. That's amazing, so though. Like, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, I'm cool. Fresh, fresh sleep. Perfect. Um, so I don't know why it didn't register your combustion here. It's like totally fucked. I don't think the cooldown windows are working properly. Anyways, from the second combustion, what I see, um, I think you ended up munching. Yeah, so I guess this is just um, an instinctual thing that might have happened when you get a Pyroblast charge and you use a Fire Blast thinking you didn't, but you did. So you use the Fire Blast charge here when you already had a hot streak, which yeah, ended up munching the, a proc. It's the timing of like yeah. the frame shift from mm -hmm. one to another. Yeah. I just sometimes think it's a little bit more instantaneous than it is and i'm like ah shit like i need to get this out before i can before yeah. i just start channeling pyroblast like an idiot standing here like a hard cast dandy yeah uh, and so and i've run into that issue myself in the past and that is something that honestly you just get used to in time that's just practice yeah, yeah, yeah. playing fire mage that's not something you like you you're gonna do wrong all the time it's just something you're gonna have to get a feel for over time and it's gonna come to you naturally it's not that's nothing that you have to worry about yeah i i understand that which is kind of why that's why I said, like, I would have been fine if it was, like, an 80% parse or something like that. Or mm -hmm. even, like, 75, whatever. Because then I'm like, you know what? Honestly, there's just shit that's going to happen. I'm new to Mage. I'm new to Fire Mage. This is my first ever raid, like, ever yeah. uh, in current expansion. Uh, or, like, yeah. So, it's... I kind of assumed that I wouldn't do awesome, but I did so poorly that I'm, like... It seems like all this top-level stuff I know... And either I'm just not doing it, but it seems like going through the timeline, I'm doing most of it, making enough mistakes where I should have problems and I shouldn't be obviously optimizing DPS. Yeah. But then the parses come back awful. Right. And I just, I don't know where that disconnect is. Because everything that you're saying, I know and I try to do actively and, and all that. Um, because it's pretty like well-known information don't much don't much procs try to use yeah, yeah, yeah. for cooldown and it's all the, it's I all the know, basic just... stuff you can read in any of the you right know, exactly rel... yeah it's all readily know. readily in it's it's all readily available it's just a matter like what i was saying before is it's all putting it into practice so the next question right. i was going to ask you is just really like technical things that you might struggle with that i know are going to be a d big dps uh, increase um you have infernal cascade on your mage yes i okay. do it's lower level though that's fine are you struggling keeping that up at all during combustion mm, not necessarily sometimes i push it a little too much and i try to get like one more phoenix flames out or something before mm -hmm. i re before i refresh it um or or like one more ability out before i refresh it and i drop it like right at zero seconds which feels pretty shit. Yeah. um but that happens less or like rarely more so than gotcha than anything okay else. um and just before we we get further i don't want you to get too hung up on um you know when you look at warcraft logs and you see mages parsing 5k and you're parsing 2k i don't want you to get hung up on the idea that that's the damage you should be doing if you're doing um like in a, in a real world scenario if you're hitting a training dummy and you have the same gear, same item level as the other person, and they're doing more damage than you, it's because they're doing the rotation better than you. But if you look at Warcraft logs, parses don't always indicate um, that you're doing the same thing. They might be padding on ads that spawn during the boss fight. They might be doing their ARE rotation in the, in the opening sequence of a boss fight where you might just be doing your single target rotation. You know what I mean? There are a lot of factors right. there that you have to consider as well. And looking yeah, at they parses- Yeah, pre-potting, getting power infusion, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, there's, there's I ton, There's tons of things that can that can skew when you're looking at Warcraft logs and comparing them to yourself. So you really have, when, you're, when you are looking at logs and comparing, you really have to look at the breakdown of what they're actually doing right mm -hmm. i want you to just keep that in mind because a lot of people get hung up on oh this guy's doing five 
5k dps and i'm doing 2k what's wrong and i look and then they're they're completely using padding like they're just doing pads on on ads you know what i mean right yeah okay um i was also the lowest damage in my entire raid group though out of dps <laughs> so really i'm a little hung up on it but not uh i'm not worried uh, about it i just want to fix it for for raid honestly how do I'm i go find to... the log yeah i can get it for you i have oh, it. i have, I I I have it here you. yeah oh, there you go. yeah let me just close this two seconds. Um, okay. I just want to see what the rest of your raid team looks like. Yeah. Uh, uh, you get to see one at... of the best outlaw rogues on our server. So for artificer there's not really that many times where there's ads there's seeds if people get hit by things but it's generally just a single target fight um what i'm gonna do is go and look fucking the frost mage dude he he made me feel bad about myself so i was like god damn it <laughs> the, are they are they more geared than you like what do you personally no, think he has a legendary okay. he has a legendary and he's been playing mage for a lot longer he's okay. yeah He's not bad. He's pretty good, actually. I just... It was just... He's the only other mage in the guild. Yeah. Um, and I don't like Frost Mage. I think it's really, really boring. So... Uh, it just made me feel bad that he was just murdering me on damage. Frost is Frost is very boring. I am very, very boring. playing that class. Yeah. And people, you know, people complain about, like, you know, fireballing six, seven times and not procking anything. And I was like, yeah, well, if you want to try going frost and seeing what that's like, you're more than welcome to. It's it's even worse. Right. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not really seeing you move around that much. So if if you look back at your, your Artificer fight, do you think that you're spending a lot of time moving? Like, is are there instances where you can think back and say, yeah, I should have you know, been in a different position where I could not be moving and be doing damage instead of running around the room. Yeah, um, I honestly should have, I think this was a bad pull from me. I started standing a little bit closer to the middle of the room because mm. my team liked to pull to one corner so that we could drop uh, the, the teleporter like right next to the boss so Melee's yeah. could get out of and, and could, get, could grab their seeds and get out. Right. Um, so I started moving a little bit closer. I think this fight, I started a little far away. And as the boss moved, I tried to move forward with it. Okay. Um, but again, I, yeah. Okay. I think so, so the reason I'm asking is because another thing that you can do to really help your damage is use shimmer a lot more. Um, I don't know how often you use shimmer, but it seems like in the timeline, you're not using it that often. There are times where you are using it, but um, Shimmer is one of the most over fucking powered abilities in the game in the sense that you can not interrupt whatever you are doing and you can keep casting and move out of basically anything. Um, utilizing Shimmer on, on boss encounters is a massive, I think it's underestimated how much of a big DPS gain it is instead of, so the normal, normal thing that'll happen is a boss mechanic's coming your way, you need to move. People instinctively press Scorch and start moving out of it when in reality, all you have to do is look to the other direction, keep casting your fireball or whatever you're doing, and shimmer out of it. And you are saving about, I don't know how long it takes to press Scorch, finish your Scorch cast, stop moving, and then start casting fireball. It's probably one or two globals worth of fireballs that you're missing out on. Which, if you so add that up you... over the course of a fight, it's, it's pretty big. Yeah. Do you recommend not having Arcane Momentum or whatever it's called? Where you... The one where you blink the, the way you're, you're moving. Yeah. yeah, I hate that. I can, I cannot play with it. I think it's. I'm very much used to using my mouse to turn my character, so I can't play with it. I end up blinking the wrong fucking way and and pushing myself into mechanics instead of moving out of them. So. Okay. I don't use I it. I just yeah. I started playing with it. It felt a little bit more natural, but I've noticed that I can't actually use shimmer to its full potential that way because I can't turn my camera to move. I have to move my character, which interrupts my casts anyway. So. What do you I mean? Didn't know if there you was a way to explain that a little bit? Well, arcane momentum makes you shimmer, shimmer in the, the direction way you're facing. that you're moving. Are you moving? Yeah, exactly. You're moving. Yeah. And um, so it's like I can't if I'm going to shimmer to the side, for example, I have to hit D. Okay, that's and already then... too many steps. It's already way too many steps. Change that. Go and take it off. 
I prom I promise you. I, you're gonna good. notice. You're gonna notice such a big difference. So when you're casting, you don't always have to be directly looking at your target, right? You can kind of turn to the side a little bit and keep finishing your cast. What matters yeah. is when the cast finishes that you're facing your target, or at least it's, right. a, it's within your line, right? Right. With Shimmer uh, and that not having that momentum thing, you literally just have to right hold right click, turn your character, and and press Shimmer, and you, and your cast doesn't ever gets interrupted. Yeah, because you like sh you pivot your character a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And that kind of falls into the other thing where it's, um, if you end up doing those sequences too slow, like if you're you're very slow at moving your character or you're you're just in general slow at pressing your buttons, it ends up being detrimental to your to your to your overall damage. That's just it's a normal thing. Yeah. So which is why I was really emphasizing before being comfortable with boss mechanics and having like situational awareness and, and being aware of the mechanics that are going on like oh this is cut like on, on artificer when that suck in is it was it happening you know it's coming if you position yourself towards the outside of the room you can continuously keep casting all the way until you hit that suck in thing and then just run in get ported and keep casting again mm -hmm. instead of like fighting yeah, to run it and casting scorch and scorching for like 60 damage means nothing you can cast right. fireballs and keep chaining your pyros all the way until that suck happens yeah. You know? That mechanic is a joke. I'm a Void Elf Night Face, so I have like 19 different blinks and it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, plus, uh, we're, we're, plus we're Night Fae. That blink saves right. your life so many times. Yeah. So, I'm getting the impression that your, your problem is not a rotational issue. This is not you not knowing how to press your buttons. I'm getting the impression that you're just being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Or not knowing how how to optimize your movement and your position in a raid encounter. Maybe that's just my yeah. impression. It's not to talk shit about you. I'm just getting that impression. No, I mean that makes sense because that's not something I can practice on a training dummy. Exactly. Um, so and that's that's kind of what I meant by like I know how to play fire mage, but I don't know how to how to be effective. I guess on fire. like I'm just missing something that comes with experience and like actually yeah. playing the game and i just haven't had time to do that so how long have you been playing the game for uh i got the game for the first time in june this year um uh, yeah this year okay bfa june i played for about two months uh on my rogue and then i came back in i want to say like early october to prep for shadowlands before it got delayed kept okay. playing my rogue Still played my rogue through Shadowlands until it started, and then a couple days into Shadowlands, they were like, or my raid, my guild was like, hey, we don't have like a good ma exotic was good, the other mage, but they don't have like a really dedicated good mage, mm -hmm. um, and so they were like, we need range DPS. You're not realistically going to get a spot for melee because I would be competing with that guy at the top, Nat right there, mm -hmm. who's actually bonkers. Um, so you they have were a like, lot of melee in your raid. Holy right, fuck. we are super, we are super melee heavy, and yeah. they were like, "You're too new. Regardless of how well you do, you're just not gonna get a melee spot. So if you want to raid, which has been my goal basically since I started, you have to play range DPS." And I was like, "Dude, I'll play whatever. I don't give a fuck. I just wanna, I oh, just you, wanna do raiding." You guys have so. ten. Do you have? You guys have ten melee. Yeah, we're a little, uh, we're a little crazy. We also have two holy paladins. I don't think we. I think we only had one running that time, but. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, Here, here's here's what I'm gonna tell you, and, and again, I don't mean to be harsh. Your former experience playing the game stems from being a melee DPS. That's a melee character perspective. Range. Yep, so it's useless. Well, it's not that it's useless. It gives you a different perspective, which is always beneficial. You know, if you can play every role in the game, tank, heal, DPS, is range, it doesn't matter. It gives you a different perspective, which overall leads to understanding what you're doing better, whether it's raid mechanics yep. or environment, whatever. But ranged in melee, going from one to the other, especially if you've never done it before, is a is a big learning curve, or it's a it's a shift. I would say it's not a right. learning curve, but it's a shift. It's a big shift. Yeah. Um, and mage, in in all honesty, is a is really not a hard class to to start getting used to and comfortable on. I think fire is the best spec to get comfortable on personally. That's how I started playing mage, and it's from talking to people over, I don't know how many years at this point, I feel like fire is a really, really good spec to start learning how to be a ranged DPS. It's very forgiving in terms of being moving and everything. It, it, it does range DPS very well, let's put it that way. Um, but you can't da underplay the, uh, the fact that you don't have ex that much experience playing a ranged DPS, which 
leads to a comfortability issue. It's, it leads to you being uncomfortable in a ranged DPS position in a raid, especially a new raid where you don't know the mechanics. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a big factor you have to you have to take into uh, into consideration as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, and that's it's again, it, that's not something that you can um, quantify on a, on a on a parse. I guess it's not something you can look and be like, oh, this guy's more comfortable with the fight than I am. That's just something you have to eventually feel out. You know? Yeah. Um, but looking at your your logs, I don't really see anything that wrong. Um, I pulled up one of my logs as, as a comparison. I don't think this is one of my best logs. There's a lot of things I can do to improve, but what we can do is go through um, and compare both of them, and we can kind of just look look at them side by side to see how they stack up. Um, sure. And generally what you'll end up seeing is the rotation. When someone's doing the rotation optimally and they know they're comfortable with it, I, I think it's very obvious in the sense that you can tell how fast they're using their cooldowns and you know how before you were saying like you're not used to the timing of heating up to hot streak yeah the spacing between those two spells for me it's very noticeable when you're looking at a timeline like this to tell that this person knows when they're getting that proc like yeah, they, in the that. back of their head they know that they're going to get a heating up here and they're spamming pyroblast waiting for it to come up does that, yeah. does that make sense yeah okay. so um and this is not to say i'm better than you at all i don't want you to take it the wrong way i'm just comparing the burst window and showing you that I know when I'm getting a heating up proc and I know when I'm getting a hot streak and I'm preemptively just fucking mashing my pyroblast keys because I know it's coming. Yeah. If we compare it to this side here, there's a there's generally a much larger spacing between your spells. Mm -hmm. And that can come down to latency, it can come down to a lot of things, but overall, my recommendation when I see this is usually just get comfortable with preemptively spamming the key you need to spam especially in our burst window like when you send out a pyroblast and you know it's gonna crit you, you should be spamming your fucking pyroblast again because you're gonna hit fire blast and you're gonna spam another one out as soon as it procs um so i you didn't have lust so th that's also gonna affect your burst window but i want i wanted to show you that how tight the spells are between each other yeah it's, we lusted late here we lost a third phase so. I'm on Huntsman here. Hold on, let me go back to uh, yeah. Artificer. Maybe, maybe on our Huntsman, we... I think we lost it first on our Huntsman, if you want to look at that. Oh, what did you do for Huntsman, by the way? Because we struggled, or at least I struggled with hitting any of the dogs, because Ignite would just pull them out of CC. Yeah. Um, or like, we would, uh, I would sheep one of the dogs, or um, we would um, pacify them, or whatever the... Yeah. I don't know what they're called. I'm not um, sure if there's would... multiple strats to our, uh, to Huntsman, but we get grips. Our, when we're ready to DPS them down after they're done being CC'd, we grip them in and we cleave them down. So we don't really have to do much in terms of like switching targets oh. and bursting them from a different angle. Like they just get gripped yeah. into melee and we, we fuck them up. Okay, that, yeah, because I just tried did? to hit... Nah, they, we, we split them. So okay. we pulled the dog away. We, we would CC one of the dogs, try to kill the other one. Um, and then once they were down, we would go for, for boss. We had gotcha. like a bit of a system cause we had a lot of in, like one of those one minute incapacitates. Okay. Um, gotcha. So, but I didn't know what to do because I ignite or not ignite, but, uh, oh shit. What's it called? The one, I think it's conflagrate. Conflag? Yeah. One, yeah. It would just like randomly proc when I was hitting a dog and it would ignite the other one mm. uh, or like, or like tap the other one for a little bit of damage and then the CC chain would be ruined. And I was like, fuck, I'll just hit the boss. Yeah. So but if yeah. your tanks are not like preemptively moving the boss away for the CC, they're going to break for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess that kind of leads us into another thing. Your raid, your, the way that your bosses are being tanked and the way that you guys do mechanics can also hinder your DPS. So like... Again, you look at a parse on Warcraft logs, right? He's got 5k DPS, you have 2k. If you look at the breakdown, maybe your rotation's the same, but maybe he's actually getting that ignite spread onto the adds, or maybe he's cleaving during his shifting power. These are all little small things that end up adding up. So I know for a fact that we, I did my AoE uh, shifting power here inside a rune, and I fucked up both of those adds on top of each other. So I was getting, I was double dipping on damage here easily. Whereas in your situation, you use shifting power a little bit later, and I'm not sure if you were cleaving on anything, but I know I blew up some fucking ads here. No, I wasn't touching anything there. Okay. So just it just goes to show you that two almost two very similar burst ro burst windows, burst rotations, very different damage numbers. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. if it's gonna track anything here. So 
your first combustion did 96 kdps i almost doubled yours that's and that's purely because of cleave i'm not sure if these numbers are accurate i don't know why this is happening this massive thing here it's kind of fucked i think the the way that it's written is a little skewed but uh yeah i, I know for a fact i was destroying more than one target there someone in um, your chat said the bonus damage on the ads doesn't count oh that's the dog bonus damage yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Dog boat. I meant the, I meant the dog. The I meant the dog with yeah. the boss. Yeah, 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 I meant the dog with the boss, not the little smallies. Um, but yeah, it, it's so again, two very similar timelines, two very different experiences in terms of how we're dealing out damage. Um, yeah. So at, let's see here, your combustion faded around 15 seconds here. Mine was out. Why is it so fucked? Yeah, I think I think the way that this is written is totally it says Okay, it's fine. 12 seconds. Okay, cool. Um yeah, so our combustion window was basically the same. You didn't really delay your combustion, but you got a lot less pyro blasts off in your combustion. Right. So your ignited again is not a big thing right now, but fitting in pyro blasts in combustion, like as many instant casts as you can cast in combustion is going to net you the biggest DPS increase. Yeah, it's just, uh, I just have to understand that the game reads heating up procs before the frames do. So like, yep. I can there's send a, off a pyroblast, delay. right, I can send off pyroblast before I see the big fire streaks on my screen. Yeah. Because the game already reads them as, as heated or whatever, so I just and, have to get more used to that. Yeah, and thinking about it, if I think about me bursting on a, on a training dummy or something, I know that I'm instinctively already assuming that it crit, and I'm already pressing Pyroblast. Maybe that doesn't exist yet for you, and that's totally fine. That's something you just mm -hmm. end up feeling out. And like you said, you yeah. just have to pay more attention to it and be more comfortable with it. That's a learning thing. Yeah. And that's, that's, total, that's something totally acceptable that a lot of people struggle with as well. It's not just you. Um, okay, I, I honestly, I, I besides uh, what we just talked about, there's nothing he, there's nothing in your logs that I'm noticing is really uh, outstanding. Like I would notice if you're not doing your combustion rotation properly, but like your double flyer basting fine, the double pyro is fine. A lot of people have been struggling with the double pyro. Seems like you're doing it almost every time, so that's perfect. Um, yeah, you told me how to do it in chat once, and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it can be tricky for, especially if you're playing with like 100 ping or something. It's, it's really, 19, really hard. I'm on 19, so I, have, I don't have that oh, excuse. Okay. Yeah, so you should never <laughs> struggle with it then. Right, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, okay, I mean, I, that was kind of where I was at too. Like, the logs, I see that I'm not doing it perfectly, mm. but I also kind of see that I'm doing it right, just not well enough. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't see where the disconnect was between not well enough and really, really shit from yeah. what it looks like I did. Because even then, like, I don't know if I should be doing least raid wide damage when we have no like ret ret pallies doing damage and they're all they're doing burst windows too. Yeah, yeah. And theirs and are arguably worse. So. Yeah, and that's the thing I kind of want to talk to you about is like there are ways that you can boost your damage and not sacrifice single target dps there are there are there are certain windows you can exploit that you can take advantage of and do more damage it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be doing less priority damage or something but it just means that you can kind of exploit certain little windows of or certain mechanics when at you know ads are going to be gripped into the to the boss like the the where the boss is standing or where it's being tanked you can take advantage of that little window and i'm using flame patch here i put a flame strike down I had one global left. Instead of pyroing, I took a I took flame patch and took flame strike because I know can fly can break CC. I know that if I'm if I end up moving and running around, if I have to like move out of mechanic and I have a, an instant cast, I can use a flame strike, deal a bunch of damage to all the adds in the circle, and and then finish my movement and then start casting fireball again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that explains it properly, but there are little things you can do to kind of deal damage while you're moving or deal damage for certain mechanics that are about to happen, and you can kind of pump your DPS numbers up a little bit. Does that yeah? Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but that's that's kind of specific to this fight though, no? Because all the other ones are just single target, wham bam, as mm, much as you can. Not really. Like last night we were on um, the council fight, right? And I know that uh, we, we were. haven't done that yet. So. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just I'm just explaining it to you. There are windows. <laughs> there are windows where the weight. There's little ads that run in from the sides, and they're all going to be gripped in. 
I know that's going to happen. And I know I'm going to pop combustion when that happens. And I'm going to do my single target rotation. And instead of using um, my Scorch, uh, my Scorch Fire Blast Pyro, I'll use a Scorch, uh, Scorch uh, Fire Blast uh, Flame Strike with Flame Patch. That way I'm doing AOE damage. I'm doing my job of killing the adds and cleaving. And I'm still doing my combustion rotation on the single target. I'm still mm -hmm. spreading my ignite. I'm, I'm taking advantage of that window because I know the ads are going to come in at full health. If you start DPSing them at 20% health, there's no point. So I'm taking advantage of the idea that all those ads are going to be stacked up together. I can blow these things up. I have the tool. I have the toolkit to, to blow these fucking ads up. I'm going to use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're just exploiting. You're just exploiting timers. And that's comes down to being comfortable with your cooldowns and boss mechanics. It all just ties into one thing. Okay, that makes sense. So then how, I guess, is the, the real question, apart from just time, mm. what can I do between not even Saturday? Like, let's say I fuck up Saturday or I take a different spec for Saturday that I'm more comfortable with. Yeah. What can I do between today and, let's say, two weeks from now when they decide who's going to make, uh, like, a Mythic roster for yeah. rating? What do I do to show that I can or like that i'm not detrimental to the team that i should be that well, i should have a spot because that's for, the goal right for for starters you can tell them that you're that you took a coaching lesson because you care oh no no they know they, that i've okay. al i've already asked all them i'm like what can i do to be better they were like just just be better and i'm like ah shit, good point um, no but so it's it's good. much more valuable it, this is the way my brain works it's much more valuable to see someone putting in the time to learn and go and find the resources they need to improve rather than someone just fucking up in a raid and this just you know leaving discord and coming back the next raid day i think it's a lot more valuable in a person and a player to see that the efforts being put in now before the mythic roster set than just you know bringing someone on with shit logs and not knowing that they've invested the time right um but more practically speaking what you can do i wouldn't i wouldn't switch specs to try and improve your point if you really like fire and you want to get good at it i would just run mythic plus dungeons try to do some like just do a pug Go into a normal pug and just fucking, they're all learning. Everyone in a pug right now, they're probably going to wipe a million times, but they're all learning the fights too. And that is a great opportunity for you to, first of all, get comfortable with the mechanics and get comfortable with the mechanics while you're doing your rotation and doing damage. That's what I would suggest. Because if you're, because it's, you're kind of like you're cramming now, right? Like you're trying to like learn really quickly before the, the raid roster gets set. Am I, am I getting that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty so, much. Yeah, so unless you are going to, you know, wait, it's just like studying for an exam, unless you're going to wait until next raid day to kind of prove yourself, I would run Mythic Plus, I would try to do a raid, even if you've killed the bosses already, go and find a pug that's pulling Shriek Wing, and maybe they'll get to Huntsman too, and you can practice that way. But how does you... Mythic, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to ask how Mythic Plus translates to, to raid, because like I, apart from single target i guess i can do like downtime stuff in mythic plus but i just feel like i'm not i'm practicing two completely different things and i would rather play like something i'm more comfortable with in a push team mm. where like arcane has really really good five target cleave right now with arcane bar bombardment mm. sorry i just like swore twice in one sentence <laughs> All um, good. But, but i'm really comfortable with that like that's kind of what i learned mage on because it was just interesting to me it felt the most like rogue in terms of combo points builder spender it's completely nothing like rogue i've learned but mm -hmm. that's how i started learning it um okay so hold on let me let I... me let me attack the first point before before you go on so the first point of how does it translate to how does mythic plus translate to raid i feel like they're one and the same personally i feel like in mythic plus um mechanics are a lot more reactive than they are in raid in raid you have a long ass time or 30 seconds until the boss slams you in Mythic Plus, you have to really be on your feet if you want to get good at it, and that a thousand percent translates to a raid encounter. And the second point I want to push really quickly before you continue is that maybe not so much now because you're still learning the base, like not I want to say the basics, but you're still learning how to play ranged. But putting yourself outside of your comfort zone, and if if Mythic Plus makes you uncomfortable, I think doing that is actually a good thing for you so that you can get used to those little things that do make you uncomfortable. Whether it's shimmering out of an ad that's doing an explosion on you in Mythic Plus, or it's getting ready to move out of an, a mechanic in a raid. I think those both translate to being more um, proactive for mechanics in general. Now, I wouldn't, I would, I would be very careful in saying that Mythic Plus and raiding are, are two completely different things. Yes, they are different, 
but I wouldn't say that they're so different that you can't learn from both and apply them to both. That's I, I would I would disagree with that. Yeah, I just meant more so for like uh, um, like things die really fast in Mythic Plus right now, mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's just in lower keys, which is all I've uh, we I haven't gotten a chance to play WoW in a couple of days, but. Um, maybe it's just in lower keys that things are dying really fast but i never have that issue of like oh i don't have a problem or i have a problem where i can't keep up damage because it doesn't matter because things die like two seconds after my combustion window ends and i'm like oh whatever i'll just throw a fireball or two um so i don't have like i feel like the bulk of what i'm doing wrong apart from getting that reactionary stuff from just hitting or doing more combustion windows getting more ready to just spam pyroblast spam my combustion macro whatever yeah i feel like i'm not getting that much out of mythic plus to, or like when i'm for what i'm struggling with the most i got you which is kind of so let me offer you a different perspective okay and you're right a lot of what you just said is, is correct it's not directly the same but i'll give you a scenario right there's a fuck ton of mechanics happening on some trash pull you're doing in mythic plus and you don't have cooldowns and you're hard casting flame strikes and you have to move out of mechanics and you have to interrupt an ad and you have to go in into melee at some point in dragon's breath because your all of your group's interrupts are on cooldown mm -hmm. knowing that in your head i have to i have to blink in in dragon's breath i have to keep hard casting flame strikes if i want these ads to die and i have to interrupt that priest that's about to heal in three seconds or it's a mm -hmm. it's healing now and i have to interrupt it the order of operations in in, in as to what you're about to do do make a, a big difference and when I'm saying try to be like being proactive in Mythic Plus or it's more reactive, I mean that you can hard cast flame strikes, shimmer into melee range, Dragon's Breath the ad once your cast is finished and interrupt the priest and then shimmer out of melee range and keep hard casting. Or you can cancel your cast, you can run over to the ads, you can Dragon's Breath, you can run back out into melee or out of melee and then you can interrupt the ad or keep hard casting, whatever the sequence is. Those two sequences might be completely different. One of them nets you a lot more DPS is in a lot more optimal and one of them is not optimal. And that's the difference I'm trying to, is what I'm trying to explain to you is there's yeah. in that scenario, there's, there's a lesson to be learned there. How do I do this optimally? How, how, how is this way more efficient than the other way? And in a raid that also matters in the sense that you need to shimmer out of an ability. You need to keep casting, you need to do damage. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Do you, you have, uh, you have a bunch of like logs of your own stuff from, from mythic plus and from raid, right? Uh, not Mythic Plus. From Raid, I do. Yeah. I thought you had, like, YouTube videos. Maybe I just... Oh, I have... It, yeah, or... I have old YouTube videos of Mythic Plus. Like, I, I don't proclaim to be the best Mythic Plus Fire Mage ever, but, yeah, I do have some content on, on Mythic Plus. No, that wasn't what I... I meant more so for, like, could we go through, like, three or four minutes of a raid poll that you had and just... Yeah, of course. Like, from your POV and just see, like, what are you thinking? When are you hitting your buttons and why? Of and course, just like go through the. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's it, it'll be a lot more relevant if I play um l last night's VOD, if that. Yeah, perfect. Works, I mean, right? I watched it, so I was there. But yeah, let's do it. Okay. I would love to see. I would love uh, to just go through what you are thinking and and when you're like, you know what, I have 20 seconds left on my combustion. I'm gonna start pooling fire blasts right now or whatever, okay. something like that, cool. just so that I can. Um, let me go and find the beginning of an encounter. Uh, okay. This might be a little bit scuffed because it's, I can't really fast forward and pause that. You know what? Uh, it'll you be easier on playback speed. Yeah, it'll, it's, I can, it's just, it's going to be fucking slow. Um, mm -hmm. and I have to scrub through, what is this? Eight hours of a stream, 12 hours of a stream. Yeah. Let, let's go to YouTube. It'll be easier on YouTube. Okay, whatever is easiest. Right. Um, a raid encounter. Um, I guess I could. Oh, it's still fucking twelve hours of content. Don't I don't want to fire mage POV. Oh, because you still they're they're all like ten hours still. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, it's it's gonna be tough. I can try. It's just four hours of content to scrub through. It's going to be tough to like get precise timings there, you know? Mm. And I don't I, like, I don't know how I would have showed you the Nazoth video, but like, I don't know that you're not comfortable with that fight. Number one, you probably didn't. Did you I, do Nazoth? I don't know anything about Nope. Nope. This okay, was my so. first. This was okay. the first time I stepped into that's, a raid that wasn't just for transmogs. That's so. what I thought. Okay, perfect. Yeah. 
Um, oh, that's not true, actually. I pugged a heroic Nazoth, or a heroic Nihilotha, but we only did like eight bosses, and we never got through Carapace because okay. it was a pug, and I was like way over geared. So it was not really relevant. <laughs> and I was on my rogue. Okay. Uh, so this is Sun King. I don't know if you've done Sun King yet. We have not, um, but still relevant ideas, I believe. Okay, yeah. So I'll explain to you what I think of going into the encounter and how it actually plays out in theory, because mm -hmm. I I'm I always make fun of myself. I end up saying I want to do something, and then I end up fucking it up midway through the fight. Um, but I go into this fight specifically knowing that there is a lot of cleave, a lot of AOE opportunities. There's a lot of opportunity to do fuck tons of damage on your on your opener, um, but there is priority targets here. So like in your head knowing which targets need to die first and where they are specifically like where, when they're going to spawn is important as well um mm -hmm. and on this fight specifically um the oculists to the right side are the kill targets they need to be interrupted and brought into melee but them being brought into melee is almost automatic we have death grips we have interrupts that means they're just going to run into melee range so i know they're going to end up being where the boss is standing now or somewhere in that area sure okay um, this is going to be so painful. So let's just go through it normally here. So now they're getting grouped up. They're all coming into, into melee range. I know that I can go in there and fuck all that shit up. I'm going to go rune of power, shifting power into melee. So... Oh, there there was my single target and then i know that i can get into melee safely i can't i kind of came in late there there was a pull where i came in early i don't know if it's going to be i want to show you two different perspectives here so that's like a that's if you're doing like i guess single target right but i want to show you a different angle here you jump just for funsies or is that part of a macro uh i jump to avoid hard casting so i spam pyroblast literally as fast as my finger can pushes it um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, if you're, if I've found that if you're not jumping, you will end up hard casting your pyroblast because there's a downtime between when you can instant cast and when you can't. And hard casting your pyroblast just ends up eating away at your combustion time, and you don't want to do that. You want to just instant cast everything. So that's why I jump. Yeah. Some people can, it, some people sense. prefer doing AD AD and moving back and forth. I prefer jumping. Interesting. Um, yeah, you, you'll see. I move a lot, and it's sometimes it's a hindrance on my DPS, and sometimes it, it saves my life. So, yeah, same. I'm I have uh, ADHD when I play. I don't know if this is the pull here. Yeah, this is the pull where I just decide to do AOE rotation because I know the ads are coming in, and I'm gonna just fucking fly down here. So, do you do the same rotation that's in the video? Yeah, so that that AOE rotation I just did now was the uh, was just like everything that was in the rotation video. That's just me doing AOE shit. Yeah. And, and in in all in all honesty, right? there's no reason for me to do that. Those ads are gonna die naturally, um, but these ads all end up dying anyways. So this is a, a one of those times where I, I would I would say this is something you can exploit because every ad is dead now. It doesn't matter if I did single target or AOE, they are all dead. The end result is the exact same. What the only real difference is you're higher on the DPS meter. That's that's it. Your priority here is number one, kicking those ads on the side, using counter or your counter spell to try and kick the ads if it's not already assigned, and then using yep. doing what I'm doing now. So in order of operations, we the end result is the same. I ended up just doing big damn on the DPS meters, but that's it. Um so this is boring raid mechanics, so so this is the, the the next little phase. So when this Vanquisher comes down, he's the priority target. Um, maybe I'll go back a little bit here. You have your legendary yet? No, I do not. I actually okay. was thinking about crafting Firestorm for a while, mm -hmm. and I made like a I called it a mature but sad decision not to craft a legendary until I can figure out what the fuck I'm doing, so that I don't. Okay. I don't know. I just feel like it might be detrimental to me to learn with that added crutch of a legendary mm. um so no i, 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 I don't think it's gonna it. i don't think it's gonna do you any harm i think that it adds another layer of complexity that n maybe you don't need at the moment but uh if you do if you are able to craft it i would say craft it 
because it's better that you learn now instead of learning a whole new thing later. You know? Is yours rank two? No, it's rank one. Loser. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if ever spawns next week. Um, but yeah, I mean, Firestorm does add a, a little layer of complexity on top of the rotation, but in general, you, you're literally just spamming Pyroblast when it procs. There are ways to optimize it, so that's why I'm pausing here. So this is me not optimizing it here. So you're going to see what I generally do is I Fire Blast really late in my Fireball. What that means is Firestorm, Firestorm activates on Hot Streak. So you want to try and activate that Hot Streak later in your cast which means you have more time on, on, on uh, Firestorm to, um, to spam Pyroblasts. Um, but I didn't do that here, I'm pretty sure. I casted it halfway through, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see in a second. So, oh, yeah, I casted a little bit super late into my bar, but Firestorm procs here. So now I have the opportunity to Flame Strike because I have Flame Patch, or I can just blow up the Vanquisher, right? Yeah. I decide to just flame strike these ads down because there's a fuck ton of them and they all need to die. It just gives you perma, perma heated up, basically, right? Perma hot streak. Perfect. Your instant cat, your your pyros and your flame strikes are instant cast and guaranteed crits. For 15 seconds. Yeah. So another thing you can look to do on fights like this is when there's ads and you you're playing with searing touch. Um, the vanquisher is now below 30% health, so you can take full advantage of that and switch to scorch which is generally what I do, which is why I have the swap action bar macro. Taking advantage of that Searing Touch talent is very, very, very important, especially on fights like this. It's much faster cast, it's a guaranteed crit, and your fire blasts generate pretty quickly, so you're generally always going to have instant casts. Or not always, but a lot. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing a little mix of Pyroblasts on the Vanquisher here, killing priority targets, all the adds are dead. There's no real reason to keep AoEing. So now I'm just using Searing Touch, killing assassins. Now I'm AoEing. I'm here, I'm trying to look for adds that are sub 30 so I can utilize that Scorch talent. And right. now we're just, the call's made to just cleave this shit down, kill everything. Now I'm just fishing for Pyroblasts. So Fire Mage is really strong in the sense that we can deal fuck tons of AoE damage when we want to, and we can also do pretty good single target damage. So if you notice that sequence of events that just happened, it went from single target to AoE back to doing nothing, basically. And we're, we're very good at switching between those things. So this is a, a moment where you can take advantage of that toolkit and just do tons of damage. So here it's single target again. We're just going through burning the vanquisher down these little ads are going to come into melee we need to start interrupting them and bring them in interrupt them all cleave down the infusers spawn these are priority uh, targets so we're going to switch to them you're going to see i'm going to switch to scorch when they're sub 30. what is your action bar swap macro uh it's down to my q so it literally just swaps you'll notice when i when i hit it it swaps my main action bar which is this with fireball it switches it to the exact i've mapped it so that it's the exact same setup except scorch and fireball are swapped and i don't some people find it weird i'm very i'm much more comfortable hitting my one button to, as my filler spell so it's very easy for me to just press q and just spam my one button since i'm already spamming um fireball anyways i never even thought of that because i i did the same thing for for sub rogue when i mm -hmm. played because I, it, you swap between self abilities and yeah non self abilities, so I just yeah. all of I've, the same abilities I use at the same time. I bound to the same key and just change them. Change the I guess yeah. action bar same as just swap stealth or not stealth. Yeah, so exactly, same thing. And I've I've personally never seen any other caster use a swap action macro. I like it. I think it works really well. But you know, to each their own. Um, okay, so here again, same thing. I end up dying here. So this is something that I, I ended up being really pissed about. Um, the ads are all sub 30 kind of now. So I was looking to Scorch, which is why it's here. So this is a mechanic that I was unaware of how fast it went off. So I'm targeted with Ember Blast, which is this ability here. And this is the cast timer here. So now I'm looking at my debuff uh, thing and I'm not seeing a timer for Ember Blast. So I'm like, how long do I have before I have to hit Ice Block? And it ends up just boop killing me instantly. So I was pissed because number one, I didn't realize how long I had before Ember Blast went off. I didn't I didn't look it up beforehand. I didn't see that there was no debuff. It's literally just a boss cast. 
So I was very, very pissed that I did not pay attention to that. Because that'll kill you instantly. So let's try and skip where I do pay attention to Ember Blast. So same thing here. Go back to the same spot in the fight where I think we're about three minutes in. There we go. Three minutes in. Okay, so now this is two target cleave. Um, both of these vanquishers... Or sorry, there's a shade of... Sorry, this is important. So this is two target cleave, but there's a priority target in this, in this sequence here. There's the shade, which is the boss. And then there's the vanquisher we still have alive that needs to die because it's fucking our tanks. Um, so in this... In this part of the encounter specifically, the boss is going to do two things. He's going to target you with Ember Blast, which needs to be soaked by your raid team or soloed. And then he's going to use a, a big-ass Conal ability that you need to move out of. So you're going to see here Blazing Surge. This is the big Conal. And then Ember Blast is the thing you need to soak. So I know Blazing Surge is coming out. I'm already going to I'm gonna swap to Scorch as soon as this finishes, I think. No, I don't swap to Scorch. Never mind. But you're not in a combustion phase right now, right? No, so I'm just... not. Yeah. You're just hitting fireball, and that is yeah. how you're priority DPSing. Yep, and exactly. That's fine. Yeah, I'll rewind there for a bit. So that's that's important to note there. Yeah. So no combustion here. I'm just straight up fi fireballing and using fire blasts on um, heating up a the hot generation. Fire blasts, right? Yeah, exactly. And I've still got over a minute left before combustion comes off cooldown, so I'm not worried about pooling for fire blasts yet, at all. I'll. How much time, like at what point do you say, okay, I'm pooling? Like, if you're on zero charges, I would say about 30 seconds to be safe. And then when you get closer to combustion, it's about to come off and you're on your capped on charges, you can use one. You want to go into combustion with about two and a half fire blast charges. So two charges and then maybe one's coming off like in four seconds. That's generally what you want right. to be at. Um, but yeah, I, I start pooling at around 30 seconds. And when I see my third is starting to come back off cooldown, I'll use one because I know I have a little bit of a window left before it, combustion's active again. Right, and you're never touching Phoenix Flames except for when it's at three charges, just to yep. put it on cooldown. Yeah, there's really no reason to use it, unless you're like, for whatever reason, there's, you know, a metric fuck ton of adds, and you need to spread your bullshit ignite for a random reason, or you really need cleave damage right away, there's no reason to use Phoenix Flames ever. It does, like, no DPS. Did you use it? I didn't get to see it. Did you use it when we were watching the those big ad fights where you are like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna go in? Oh, my AoE uh, rotation? Yeah. You, yeah, for sure. you did. Yeah, yeah for okay. sure. In combustion, though. Out Inside of combustion, combustion, not at all, or not? Not at all, not at all. Sometimes maybe I'll use one while I'm, if I have to move out of something and I have no more fire blasts, or like I'm casting Scorch or something and I have, I don't know, a second to kill, and I know that combustion's, sure. a, you know, way off cooldown, yeah, maybe I'll use one, but you shouldn't. And that's just, that's one of my errors too. Like sometimes I'll press it and for me, it's like, I still have it subconsciously that it's going to crit and it doesn't crit. So just don't do it. Mm -hmm. I end up doing it too and it's a, it's a bad, it's a bad habit. So here what I should be doing, it's important to note, is I should be scorching that Vanquisher right now. So uh, what a lot of mages do is they'll... Heating up rocks. Exactly. What a lot of mages will do is they'll make a macro where it's cast at focus, scorch, and they'll scorch, scorch, pyro their main target. So you're getting scorches off on the Vanquisher, which is the target I'm not currently attacking, and you'll pyro the target you are attacking, which is what I should be doing here. You don't have that macro though? I, I have it. It's not on my bars. Mm-hmm. I just, I just wasn't thinking that that was going to be a thing in this fight. So that's something sure. I can optimize on too. It's like I can have that macro on my bar somewhere ready so that when no, when that situation does come up, I can Scorch Scorch Pyro and get your, your Pyro's a lot quicker. Yeah, that makes sense. I would have usually just done a mouse over macro, but that's not nearly as easy mm -mm. when there's like 19 trillion yeah, The cast at focus is so fucking good. Mm -hmm. So here I get a Firestorm proc. I'm pumping the boss with Pyroblasts, getting out with that shit. I think I die here, actually. Or I proc caught or something. Yeah. The fucking assassins annihilated my ass. Yeah. So this is something else that I need to call myself out on. Don't ever die without using Ice Block. You never want to be dead and not have Ice Block on cooldown. If you die with Ice Block on cooldown, you're, you're not doing your job. So I died there. I could have blocked. I had like six stacks of the bleed on me, and I didn't block. I, I saw caught proc. I used my health pot. It's on cooldown, but I didn't block. And ice barrier. I'm um, sorry. Uh, flame barrier is off cooldowns as well. So I could have survived that, which 
helps your raid. Like you don't want to die, obviously. Dying like dying is zero DPS. So if you die, you're you're a wasted DPS slot. And that's another thing. Some people their rotation's fine, their mechanics are generally fine, but they might stand in one too many things and they get one shot and they're dead half the raid. Don't do that. That's also a massive bad thing. It's actually kind of funny, but or because uh, I don't know about funny, but amusing. I went into this raid saying like, hey. If I'm going to do anything tonight is I'm just not going to die. And I played the pineapple game maybe like 20 times. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of the bosses, if we looked at uh, wipe fest, I think it is. If you look at wipe fest, yeah, it has that stat where like if everyone played the fight the way I did, we would have 100 parsed it in <laughs> terms of mechanics. Yeah. And I was just sitting on the bottom of the DPS and it was just I asked my raid leader. I was like, hey, but I died last every fight. Like I never I never got hit by anything. I was doing great. And he was like, dude, that's fine, but if you're running around like an idiot, you're just dead weight, and not yeah. having the person in the first place would have also had them not eat any mechanics, so you're not really doing anything for us. Yes. Uh, and I was like, fuck, like, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. So this, everything I thought I knew about don't die so you can do DPS, I forgot to do the second part. No, um, but the, the thing is, they're not mutu mutually exclusive. Like, our raid leader, uh, Osiris, he, he, oh, he punches it into our head that mechanics take precedence over damage damage comes with knowing mechanics but it doesn't go the other way around you don't do damage right. and not know mechanics because you end up dead but if you know the mechanics and you're you're good at not dying damage will come that's something that you can learn on a, a training dummy right but mechanics take precedence over dps so i i kind of disagree with your raid leader get comfortable with the mechanics first and then worry about doing damage later ideally you want to do both but in order of operations, I would say mechanics and surviving and not being dead are number one and doing optimal DPS is number two. Right. That's, that's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's skip the floor POV here. How do, how do Firestorm and Combust work together, by the way? So like you ha keep in mind that Firestorm procs or Firestorm will always be activated on hot streak generation, meaning that when you have an instant cast Pyroblast slash Flame Strike ready, that's the time where it's going to pop. So if it pops during combustion, to answer your question specifically, um, you want to just mash Pyroblast as fast as you can. Um, but you also want to, if it happens during combustion, you also want to maintain your Infernal Cascade stacks. Meaning you want to use a Fire Blast to, to, you know, to proc that instant cast Pyro. Even if you have an instant cast Pyro already, you want to you wanna try and maintain your IC stacks in your combustion sure. as well. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah. top priority is IC. And then just keep hitting your pyroblast button until it falls off. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So, so like there, like no phoenix flames, no nope. fire blast outside of. Yeah, nope. I guess because you don't have to generate any charges. So what's yep, the point? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So here, this is another thing where this is gonna, this might happen to you as well, or anyone playing Firestorm really. Um, so it's a it's a bad habit, and I'm still not used to Firestorm. I got it like two days ago. Mm -hmm. Um. So here, I see how I or fire blasted really fucking early into flame strike. There, this is a bad habit of mine. <laughs> when I am doing mythic plus and I'm hard casting flame strikes, this is a, a bad habit. I think a lot of people might have, not just me. You'll cast flame strike and you'll want to put your fire blast on cooldown, so you'll fire blast super early into your cast. So I'm gonna start casting flame strike here, and I I fire blasted at the beginning of my cast, which means that if I was to wait. I'd have to wait two seconds before I can cast my next pyro. So what I do is I just can cancel my cast immediately and start spamming flame strikes. But you don't want to do that ideally. In a, in a perfect scenario, you'd want to fire blast at the end you of your cast. You get that extra flame strike off. You get that extra like yeah. whatever three k damage, right? Yeah. So. That 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 time wasted of fire uh, firestorm proccing and you reacting to it is one global you're missing out of firestorm, which is a DPS. Right. Test. Yeah. So I wait. I know I, I kind of took a lot of time, um, but I know you're trying to get into Mythic Plus. It says mm -hmm. it says on your stream. But if there was, I don't want to take much more of your time. No, so dude, don't I, worry about it. If I'll there's, do. I guess could we do like a rundown? Like, what do I? If, if I need to make a priority list for, be thinking about this at all times. Do this. Yep. Now. Yeah. Basically, what do I do? Okay. From your, with, with this information. Your first thing is minimizing your movement. I'm going to write this down because I'm going to send it to you after. Minimize your movement. Okay. Um, 
and I'm it's short I'm gonna expand on it all, like later off stream but what I mean by minimize movement is take advantage of the fact that you are a ranged DPS with a movement ability that allows you to keep casting so shimmer is your friend you need to try and maximize how much you get out of shimmer meaning like if you if you can avoid canceling a cast and moving or not canceling your cast and moving you should always prioritize using shimmer to not cancel your casts canceled cast is let's say let's say for round numbers fireball is a two second cast right you're casting fireball one second of your cast has already been spent so you're one second of investment into that fireball cast and a mechanic happens if you cancel that cast you just wasted not only the one second you spent casting the fireball but you're also wasting another global having to move and if you calculate you know reaction speed and all that stuff it ends up being about three seconds that you are wasting before you start casting again whereas mm -hmm. if you are using shimmer that cast finishes your that fireball cast keeps going and you moved so you're out of that mechanic now and that fireball already hit the boss that's a big dps gain over the course of an encounter so right. minimizing your movement is something important and the only reason i'm putting this first is because i feel like you're not as comfortable as being a ranged dps as you should be if you want to be like you know if you want to do optimal damage that's the first thing um take advantage of um how do i want to word this what i'm trying to say here is i want you to try and and realize that there are certain situations and encounters that you can exploit and take advantage of so i gave you this fight as an example but you saw that there are there are times where i can utilize my searing touch talent on a boss like this to, to cleave onto other adds or like I told you about the, the Scorch um, at your focus macro. You can utilize yeah. that ad that's at 30% health to Scorch Scorch Pyro instead of Fireballing like I did. Mm -hmm. So noticing w like windows of opportunity like that, I think that that's something you should pay attention to. Um, I'm going to put this as find windows of opportunity to utilize your toolkit, i.e. Scorch sub 30%. Um, AOE cleave. Okay. Does that make sense? Find windows of opportunity to utilize your toolkit. Scorch sub 30, AOE cleave damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, and I feel like I have to put this as a third thing. I want you to try and practice before that roster gets finalized. I want you to try, like, go into a raid that you like, go into the raid fresh with a pug and wipe on a boss for a couple of hours and just get comfortable sure. with playing fire. You don't have to, obviously. These are just recommendations, but I feel like putting yourself in a, in a raid environment and trying to get used to the to the rotation and you know using your macros properly and all that stuff, I think that's going to do you a lot of good. And if you end up getting um, onto the Mythic roster and you go into that fight, all the normal mechanics will already be like a second nature thing to you. All you have to know yeah. is the Mythic mechanics. Mm -hmm. So practice fire mage <laughs> it sounds so shitty when i write it like uh, that. Not so shitty, yeah. <laughs> um and the i guess the last thing is your rotation i want you to try and do it faster be more proactive with your burst rotation and this is more or less talking about what we looked at before which is your timings in your burst try to get that try to get that a lot more tight you know what i mean like try to make them a little bit tighter together so your burst window here. I want you to try and get this to be, squeeze that shit in together. If you were to like take, like if it's like an elastic, I want you to like try and like, yours is stretched a little bit, like pull it, pull it in a little bit closer together. Try to fit more instant casts in that window. How many pyroblasts do you actually cast? I, I know you have haste, so I've, I, it'll be a couple yeah, more. Yeah, it, it's, I, you want to ideally cast seven. That's, that's the goal you're looking for here. And you got one, two, three, five, six. So practice getting that extra maybe i can find an example where you got seventh and so you're not completely let down i'm sure well, you've done it before okay and you got eight in you got eight while hasted yes eight while okay. hasted you can get even you, i'm sure you can get way more than that like if i would have gotten pi and you know there's a there's a ton yeah, of yeah. things you can do to optimize that but what i'm saying is like you have 10 or 12 seconds of combustion Phoenix Flames doesn't really count as a global because there's travel time. It feels clunky as shit to press, you know, like it's not right. a good button, but you don't think of a, I, I'm tempted to say, don't think of a specific number to fit, but I want you to just try and get 
as many instant casts as you possibly can inside your combustion window and start with that and yep. then you can start looking at it and saying oh fuck i got seven i got seven pyros off that's that's sick was that's i where hasted for this did i get uh, six with haste i think i was i think we had blood you lust. got lust halfway through your combustion Weird. so why did yeah. i get lust halfway through my combustion a hunter lusted for you if there's an asshole, you should have lust before you started. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Generally, you lust on the pull if you're going to lust and not yeah, I don't five know. seconds Ten into the fight. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So you can blame I'll, your hunter I'll for that one. With him. Yeah, yeah, I will. You can blame you know, your honestly, everything comes down to just hunters don't have brains. Yes. Yeah, wheelchair brutal. class. Wheelchair class. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Sounds so good. So as those many are the cast as possible. Yes. Um. Uh. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to. It sounds like shit if I write that. But basically, what I'm saying is, I want you to you remember that delay it. we were talking about. Like, I want you to try and practice getting those pyro blasts out faster. Because right. it seems like you Trust. know, like your rotation is fine. Like, I'm not finding issues with it. It's just got to be a little bit quicker with it. Mm -hmm. Your fingers have to be warm and not cold. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah. So just be better, I guess. Be better. No, it's not about be get better. You just get like better. You learn, there we yeah, go. get there better. Go. Me too. I have to I still tell myself that. You just be just yeah. get better. Yeah. Um I I'm not rushing you out or anything. Do you have any other questions or did anything we didn't cover that you want to talk about? Uh No. no. Uh wait, let me look through our DMs real quick. Did I say anything really smart in there before we started or no? No rush, take your time. Practicing rotation is huge. Yes, chat. Absolutely. Practicing rotation is massive. I think it's I'll press this type thing. How one to set up frequent so about ten seconds per fire blast charge that I'm saving, right? So Say that again? Eight like every if you have like one fire blast charge and your combustion is coming up and do you actually have ever, do you have fire blast on zero charges at all times until thirty seconds before your combustion window? It happens right after your combustion. If you get a streak of procs, you know, if you get a streak of crits, you can use you can use your fire blast charges as they come up. What's important though is that your combustion is going to suffer if you go into it with no fire blast charges. Because first of all, you're not going to get IC right away, and yeah. you're not going to get instant casts. So what you want to really focus on there is be liberal with your fire blast charges. But when you notice combustions coming up in 40 seconds, 30 seconds, pay a little bit more attention to it. If you have zero charges, be like, okay, I can't use fire blast. I have to pull. And then if you get three charges and combustion still 20 seconds away from being off cooldown, you can use a fire blast charge or two. That's fine. Mm. Okay. It's there's not there's no rule for that. It's literally just about feeling it out. And keep in mind, fire blast charges will come up faster with more haste. Yeah. So like, and I'm saying that for a reason. If you lust on the pull, and you have PI for example, you can use three fire blast charges back to back to back in your your burst window. And then Phoenix Flames, and by the time you finish that sequence, your Fire Blast charge will be back off cooldown. And you can actually refresh your IC that way. So mm. keep in mind how much haste you have. If you have Lust, you can be a little bit more liberal with your Fire Blast charges as well. Okay. I think I have like 19%. Yeah, I have 19% on the dot, actually. Yeah. So I like I know with my level of haste, if I get PI and I have Lust, I can Fire Blast back to back to back. And I can have another fire blast charge by the time I need I see to re, uh, be refreshed. That's just so me. That's just, just me that practicing extra and playing. Little bit of damage. Well, it's not really extra bit of damage. It's just more like initial burst. But in terms of overall pyro blasts, you're still relying on Phoenix Flames travel time and all that shit. So it doesn't right. really make a difference. Makes sense. Just about feeling out your your character, like knowing how much damage you can do, knowing how your face feels with your burst, like all that stuff just plays out and just having experience with doing damage, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think I have any other questions. So shifting power on cooldown, basically, right after combustion. Yep. In a rune, if I'm doing damage with it. Mm -hmm. um, never have Phoenix Flames on cooldown. Always be casting more instant casts equals Pog Champ. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna... I think I got it. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write more notes with these. I'm just writing them down now so I can remember myself. And then uh, no, a little bit sure. later, I'll write some more details and I'll send them to you. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And um, yeah. never be shy to to message me with follow up questions and stuff. I, you know how to reach me. So 
you can always ask me more questions and stuff. And what I always do with my my sessions is I always one week or two, like maybe a week, two weeks after, I'll always gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna check in with you and ask you if your your DPS has improved, how you feel about your burst, like if anything's changed, and then uh, hopefully you'll be parsing more than 19s. Yeah, that is the goal. Yeah. That is the goal. Definitely not less. Yeah, definitely not less. If you did less, then I'm never doing coaching ever again. Okay. Well, I will try not to let you down then. All right. Okay, cool. All right, dude. It's Enjoy been great. the Mythic Plus Prime. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Anytime. Thank you. You're welcome, bro. See you. Ciao. What a gentleman. What a nice man. This is why I love you guys. You're all you're all just a bunch of chillers.